This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone. It is time once again to look at some mail sent in by viewers like you. I've got a zine that I wanna start with today that is absolutely awesome. This comes to us from two mail time veterans. This comes to us from Zhao Fletcher and Felipe Oliveira. You might remember this first scene that they sent me back in October of 2022. This is called A Thousand Words and they have done several issues of this now. This was volume one. Volume two was this really cool one which was sent in last year. This one was done with a very interesting printing process that's black and white, but it's actually white ink on black paper, which is completely awesome. And then this is their third zine. This is the latest in A Thousand Words. This is volume three. Zhao also included a note, which reads, Dear Ted, hope this letter finds you well. We want to share with you the third volume of our A Thousand Words magazine and share with you the challenges we faced in this edition. In this new publication, we managed to leave the scene as authors and create an edition comprised only by invited authors. This was a big step for us since it was always what we planned for the project. And now as publishers, we are committed to create the visual narrative and combine different photographers. In this edition of 16 pages, we have Spanish photographer Laura Alandes, Portuguese Catarina Osorio de Castro, and Brazilian Pedro Lobo. All of them experienced photographers with whom we have never worked with before, but our work was fairly easy because we made the lineup in close collaboration with all authors as a group. Being open and willing to make conceptions enables us to build together something that would have been very hard to achieve if we were just to dictate what we were willing to publish. Collaboration is the main topic of this project, which aims to be more than a photography editorial and more of a platform where photographers can meet and present their work. It's a process and it takes time, but we will get there. Thank you for your support. And if you have the chance, please give us your opinion on this new edition. Regards, Zhao and Philippa. So Zhao, a couple of comments that I wanna make on this. First of all, the printing on here is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see this from the video or not, but when you're printing really dark like this with images with very low exposures, it's really hard not to keep them from being too black or too, too muddy and you lose detail. This is really well done. I also love the group concept of this and I love the fact that like with the other issues of this magazine, that it has kind of a stream of conscious approach to it. There's not a lot of text, it's all images, everything's full bleed and it just engages the viewer. This is very well done. You guys should be very proud of this. I will link up to all of their stuff in the show description below so you guys make sure you support these folks. They're doing some awesome work. Seriously, their magazine is probably the most high quality of anything that we've gotten in here. It really is good. Next up, I want to share this book with you, which is really cool as well. This comes to us from Bill Burlingham. This is called The Question Is. And Bill also includes a note which reads, Dear Ted, I have enclosed a copy of my book, The Question Is, photographs by Bill Burlingham for your consideration. I think it would be a great conversation starter on several levels. As stated in the preface of this book, I put down my professional gear for this project and embraced the simplicity of my smartphone and a retro photo app. What started as an amusing novelty soon became serious art project, which lasted for six years and continues to this day. I have pursued alternate approaches to photo projects in the past, including pinhole, Holga, and infrared, but this one ignited an ember of creativity. I have always considered the square a quote unquote, look at this format, a way of presenting content without horizontal or vertical prejudice, a gift in a box. Black and white is my preference with an emphasis on black, and I'm always looking for images that present themselves as questions. I often wonder how I continue to find myself in the right place and the right perspective and the right tool to capture these curious little squares. I know for sure it has nothing to do with gear or technical formula. Perhaps it's just innocent curiosity, patience, and a passion to share a look at this moment. Sincerely yours, Bill. So Bill, awesome work and a couple comments that I wanna make on this and I really love what you're doing. You know, when you consider, and I've talked about this on the show before, you know, when you have black and white images, you are once more removing the subject from reality that you're photographing. And I think the fact that you're using an iPhone and you're actually intentionally making these a little grungier than they are in real life, I love the way that this gets away from a lot of the real slickness that we see with modern digital photography. And I think it creates uh, a mood that definitely brings the viewer in. Now, the second thing I want to address is the whole idea that you mentioned here, the question is, and trying to have photography that asks questions. I did a video on this many, many years ago, and it's something that I think is really important because, you know, as photographers, I think a lot of us tend to, well, at least in the way we approach our work, uh, we look at things like, you know, everything from the equipment that we're using, making sure we have the best quality imaging we could possibly have. We also look at composition and, you know, whether we're using the rule of thirds or something that digs a little deeper, you know, is there an organization geographically or geometrically, excuse me, to what's going on in that composition? And I think when you get 
into the fourth wall, so to speak, then you're doing something more with your photography, which is asking a question. And I think you've brilliantly done this here with images where you have the fish looking at the waterfall and you're using perspective, you're using scale, you're using a lot of visual techniques to your advantage to create something, and I don't wanna use this word surrealist, but something that is kind of made you look at this and what is it that I'm looking at and why. And I think that kind of question mentality on here it, that permeates throughout the entire book is very important. And I think it's something that, that all photographers should be thinking about in some way, shape or form, even if you're not approaching things from this style or this aesthetic. Uh, I really like this. I think it's well done. The only comment I would make on this, and I love the way it's printed by the way also, uh, is that I would like to see you kind of take this maybe a step further. You know, if we're talking about breaking the fourth wall and you're looking beyond composition and beyond aesthetic and beyond cleanliness and tidiness and all the things that make a perfect image, so to speak, and you're looking at this from a conceptual perspective, which you clearly are, I would look at this next in how does this continue throughout the book? So for instance, can a spread have a conceptual quality to it where one image talks to the other image? And how does that happen when you turn the page? That's the only thing I would wanna see more of in here. Um, I think this is really well done. I think you've done a nice job, at least graphically, of selecting images that lay face to face on each page, but uh, I would like to see the concept carry over. So just something to think about, but man, Awesome work. You guys check this out. I'll link below. Okay, this is super cool. We have another male time veteran who has approached us again with another project and then also a project that was inspired by Dan over here. So I'm gonna get to those in just a second, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor this week who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace. How easy is it to build an amazing website in a matter of minutes? Squarespace has you covered. It's dead simple. Head over to Squarespace, hit get started, you can start by using Squarespace Blueprint AI and SEO tools, which will give you an impressive website in no time. Something unique because, you know, you're not like other websites. Give your site a name. Next, you can build your homepage. We'll start with a few preset layouts just to get us going. Want to sell products like prints, books, maybe you make a zine? Well, you can feature those on your homepage. Create a few more sections if you want. Let's also give it a color palette. There's a whole bunch to choose from. Just get us started. We can change this all later. Next, let's select the typography choices. Welcome to your website. Everything is set up and it's all ready for you to customize. Squarespace is built on Fluid Engine, the next generation of website design. Select Edit and Fluid Engine allows you to drag, place, and resize any element on the page. You can snap these to a grid. You can make them float on top of one another. You can freeform however you like. You can even preview and adjust how the site looks on either desktop or mobile. The layouts are independent. Of course, you'll want a portfolio for your work. Creating an image gallery is as easy as dropping a folder of images on your web browser. Once uploaded, you can drag to resort, customize the look, and Squarespace writes all of the code for you. Everything just works and it looks fabulous. Want to sell your own prints, books, or zines? Flexible payments allow you to make the checkout process absolutely seamless when you sell products or services. You can accept credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, and in eligible countries, you can offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. You should try Squarespace for yourself. It's absolutely free, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com AOP, sign up for that free trial. If you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That's right, the code is AOP. So stop procrastinating, go build your website today. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, next up, this is really cool. This is a mail time veteran here. This is Dan Fiore, and what he sent in is this tin box here, which reads on the front, win place show, a day at the races, a deconstructed zine, June 2024. This is actually the third time that Dan has sent work in, and he always sends something very different. You guys might remember the exhibition in a box that came in last year or so. Anyway, this is really cool. He also includes a note in here that I'll read to you. It says, hi, Ted, I hope this note finds you well and you are as creative as ever. I'm back for a third time at the Art of Photography for your critique and feedback. My latest project, a deconstructed zine inspired by you titled Win Place Show. This tactile visual story shares my element experience at Saratoga Racecourse, where my friend's horse, Bookham Dano, won the eighth race. I created this project from concept, storytelling, composition, lighting, tones, printing, photo size, and placement and production. 
I heard bits of your many AOP YouTube chats in my head as a solid blueprint for what creative and good could be. As always, thanks for your information and inspiration. Ciao, Dan. So Dan, I absolutely love this. One of the things that I love about the projects that Dan sends in is they're sort of based on the idea of a zine or even a book. I mean, there's a lot of images in this one that he sent me today. But I love the fact that they're handmade and they're presented in a way that is very one-off, so to speak. In other words, they're not mass produced, they're not bound, they're not delivered in the usual book format. So that's one thing I really love about what Dan's doing here. The other thing that I love, and you can kind of get the gist through this, is the narrative that carries throughout. These aren't images that are meant to necessarily be standalone. This was conceived as a project, it happened all in one day. It's another thing I love about this. You know, I teach zine workshops and a lot of people think that they need to have these projects that carry over a number of years. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is awesome. You can create awesome work that way, but don't overlook the idea of a zine or something that is a collective body of work that works together as a unit that can be done in a very short amount of time. So Dan, thanks for sending. This is awesome. I love seeing what you're up to and uh, man, really cool work. So you guys check Dan out, which is very timely because this brings us up to our next project, which comes to us from Chris Parsons. Uh, this is very cool too, because his work is actually inspired by the stuff that Dan Fiore has sent before. So uh, we have them both featured back to back in the same episode. So Chris writes a note and my gosh, Chris, this is some tiny handwriting here. I think this was intended for a much younger YouTuber to read, but I'll try anyway. Chris writes, hi Ted, I have been watching your videos for years, wanted to share a project I did last year. It was inspired by Dan Fiore's exhibition in a box. While I didn't have a full exhibition, I did select one photo from each month of 2023 to make it into a postcard. One is January, two is from February, etc. Mostly I shoot the streets in Toronto. All of the images are from the city across the different seasons we live through. My choice of black and white is to link images I'm making resonate with the historical imaging made of Toronto, with a broader ambition of seeing how the city can change and also does not over the coming years and decades. Thanks again for your episodes, especially for your exploration discussing the greats of photography. Chris. So Chris, awesome work, awesome concept. I love the idea of once a month. I love the idea of using Toronto as the scenery in here. And I love that these are just printed as postcards. You could send these out. You could have them together. You could have them separate. They work on many levels. And uh, the black and white printing is very well done on here. So uh, I thought that was really cool that Chris's project was inspired by Dan's also. And I'm glad the timing was such that I could feature them both on the same video. So anyway, you guys check everybody out. I will link them up in the show description below this video. Support your fellow photographers. And if you have any questions, drop them there also. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.